Do any of you have Google Homes or Alexas at your house? You know those little smart speakers that you can talk to, and in theory, they tell you they do what you... Do any of you have Google Homes or Alexas at your house? You know those little smart speakers that you can talk to, and in theory, they'll do what you tell them to do? My wife and I have a number at our house, and we really like them. Uh, For instance, each night before I go to bed, I say, hey, Google, forest sounds, and I am serenaded to sleep with chirping crickets and rustling leaves as if I am camping in the woods. And also, I say this because we don't really listen to CDs or make our own playlists or listen to the radio anymore. Instead, it's usually my wife will go to our speaker and say, hey, Google, play the Beatles, or hey, Google, play Bon Iver. My wife also loves to say, hey, Google, play John Mayer, or hey, Google, play the 1975. So in this series called Playlist, I want to introduce, to, introduce you to my playlist at my house, and often that's the band, the 1975. In particular, I love listening to their 2018 album, a brief inquiry into online relationships. Yes, that's a mouthful of a title, but I find it nice listening and also a thought-provoking album. Here, let me show you a snippet of an interview with the 1975's frontman, Maddie Healy. A brief inquiry into online relationships, 2018. I became obsessed with the idea that I, I, what I described at the time as a profound, not profound realization that all of our communication is mediated through the, the internet. Every single facet of human communication that isn't done face to face is done through the internet. If you said that 15 years ago to somebody, it would definitely provoke questions, questions that just aren't asked now. But when you're in it, it's, it almost feels like you're that guy. Is this strange? Should we be feeling like that? Am I justified in feeling sad about this? Is that cool? I don't know. There was no, on that whole record, even like love it if we made it, there's no utopia is this way and you're wrong and you should change your opinion. There was no opinions on that record. It's just questions. In sum, this album is about the internet. That means this album is about basically everything and nothing. The internet is a wild place. It's the spot where we can find funny Bernie memes. And right now, that's your cue. Put some of your favorites in the comments below. And it's also a place to stay in touch with friends and family and do shopping on Amazon and watch movies on Netflix and amidst COVID, work over Zoom and participate in church over Facebook or YouTube. But I have to say, I think I first learned the power of the internet in January 2009, when I was studying abroad in Budapest, Hungary, in Central Europe. Before going to bed one night, I got out my computer and logged on the internet. And I watched a grainy cell phone video on my computer. It was of a shooting of Oscar Grant, who was an unarmed, handcuffed black man in my hometown of Oakland, California. I was literally transported halfway across the world by the internet from my hotel room in Hungary to my hometown to a train station I had been to countless times, Fruitvale Station. The internet makes the world a smaller place. It connects us. It's a place where friends and family can be stayed in touch with and... It's also, though, a place that divides us. The Internet's a place where lies and conspiracy theories can run rampant and bullies can wreak havoc with their keyboard, and same thing with terrorists. Countless folks have been radicalized by what they have seen online, be it by ISIS or by QAnon. The Internet has toppled governments, but it's also created others. The Arab Spring spread like wildfire in the beginning of the previous decade. It was a grassroots democratic movement throughout the Middle East that deposed the leaders of Egypt and Yemen and Tunisia and Libya. 
On the other hand, I cannot imagine Donald Trump becoming our 45th president without his Twitter account. All of this is to say that the internet is an expansive, paradoxical, invaluable place in our lives today, and it is ridiculously ambitious for the band, the 1975, to make an album about the internet. But I love this overstuffed album as it is filled with music, different musical styles and tones and moods. Some songs are melodic, others are fun and bouncy and pop. Others are despairing, and yet others begin with shouting with profanities. This album, in sum, asks critical questions of the internet, and it also asks vital questions of us as Christians. Namely, as people of faith, how can and should we use the internet? How can we use it to embody the good news of God's healing, redeeming work? How can we use the internet to bend the universe towards justice, to champion truth, and to foster deeper, fuller relationships? In his letter to the church in Colossae, the Apostle Paul writes the following. For I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those in Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face. I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love so that they may have all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery. That is Christ himself in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am saying this so that no one may deceive you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit and rejoice to see your morale and the firmness of your faith in Christ. This is one of those Bible passages that feels like it could have been written 2,000 years ago or today. I'm especially taken by the line, though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, and I rejoice to see your morale and the firmness of your faith in Christ. I feel like the Apostle Paul when I tell you, though I am not physically with you today, church, I am with you in spirit. Like Paul, I am so encouraged by the firmness of your faith in Christ in this strange season of COVID. Your generosity and your courage and your patience inspire me and give me strength. And yet this scripture is more than just the words of an ancient church leader to a congregation. It is the word through which Christ speaks to us today. I encourage you to slow down and listen to this passage once more. Listen to what God is telling you through this passage. And also, I encourage you, put your thoughts in the comments below. Share a word or an image or a phrase that stand out to you. A reading from the book of Colossians. I want you to know how much I struggle for you, for those in Laodicea, and for all who haven't known me personally. My goal is that their hearts would be encouraged and united in love so that they may have all the riches of assurance that come with understanding so that they might have the knowledge of the secret plan of God, namely Christ. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in him. I'm telling you this so that no one deceives you convincing arguments, because even though I am absent physically, I am with you in spirit. I'm happy to see the discipline and the stability of your faith in Christ. The words united together in love stand out to me. Though we may not be physically together on this Sunday morning, Though we may not know each other personally, 
we are united in love. We worship a God who unites us together in love. This is a God that unites together the left and the right, whites and blacks, Americans and those from other countries. This is a sort of love that binds us together more closely than our physical proximity to one another ever could. We are really still church together, even when we gather together in front of our computers or our phones. We are really still church together today because we are united together in love. God's love. There is also something else that strikes me about this passage. I am also struck that Paul claims that God's plans and wisdom and knowledge are embodied in the human, Jesus of Nazareth. Though we are bombarded with massive amounts of information on the internet, there is no more rich or full or true place to access the knowledge of God than in the human person, Jesus of Nazareth. We learn of God and of God's truth not through convincing arguments or rational proof, but in the life of Jesus. You see, there's this story in the Gospel of Matthew where John the Baptist has fallen on some hard times and he's been arrested and he's beginning to wonder if Jesus is all he is made out to be. So he sends some messengers, some of his disciples to Jesus, and he asks, are you the one to come or should we look for another? He's asking for some convincing proof. He's asking for some sort of argument that Jesus is the Messiah, the one that he's been waiting for. Jesus then replies with a passage of scripture that has given me strength through this season of COVID. It comes in the book of Matthew chapter 11. And Jesus replies to John, those who were blind are able to see. Those who were crippled are walking. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who were deaf now hear. Those who were dead are raised up. The poor have good news proclaimed to them. To summarize, Christ is not proven and revealed in rational argument. He does not point to what he said or done in religious spaces like church buildings as proof that he is the Son of God. No. The proof that Jesus is who he said he is can be found in the sick being healed and the broken being mended by his life and his ministry. It is so tempting for us to want to come back together in person, and I get it. But I am so proud of us as the atonement community for our patience and our restraint as we continue to gather online for church. For in doing so, we are proclaiming Christ's ministry of healing. Just as Jesus was against skin diseases and deafness and other maladies of the first century, Jesus today is against COVID. And our embrace of the internet and our church happening on the internet is our way of showing that we believe that Christ is still in the ministry of healing and of eradicating of disease. And let me be clear right now. The church is not made by a building, but by Christ and by Christ's presence. And Christ today is present in the healing of the sick. So this brings me back to my original question at the beginning of this sermon. How as Christians can we use the internet to proclaim God's healing, saving, redeeming work? Maybe right now it is showing that 
we believe that God is in the business of healing and is on the side of putting COVID back in its place. Though we as the church today in America have the right to gather, we follow a higher law, God's law of love, a love that unites us together, even when we are not together physically with one another. That love holds us together. That love will defeat COVID. That love will bring us through this. That's the love that's making all things right. That love is coming as part of God's reign over all places, all persons, all things, even the internet. For this, thanks be to God. Amen.